Okay, today we're going to start um, working on the beginning of our last two final assignments. And these are our big ones. Um, both of them are research papers and composition in, uh, for Comp 2 deals with argument. You have seen that you have read numerous articles from your textbook. They are controversial issues and you are required to take a side and then always give support. Why are you choosing the side that you have to argue and try to persuade others to come to your side? Well, for the culmination of the course, we have two large papers to write. One is a censorship paper, and as we get to it, you will be getting more details and you'll know exactly what it is you need to write about. But whenever we do research papers, that's exactly what the term indicates. You're going to be researching. Um, you are going to choose a topic about censorship. Actually, censorship, uh, the requirement for this paper will be, do you think it's beneficial to society or do you think censorship is harmful to society? You're going to have to decide what side you want to take and then you are going to do some research and find articles that support the side that you take. And then you're going to write all of this in your paper. When you do this, when you use other people's sources, you must give them credit. You must document every time you use someone else's ideas. This is very, very important or you can be accused of plagiarism. There are two times when you have to document. Once, if you use a direct quote to support what you're saying, absolutely, you must let the reader know who it was who has written this quote or who has spoken this quote and you have to give the proper documentation. Secondly, even if you take material, you read an article, you take the material and you rewrite it in your own words, you still must document the material even though it was written in your own words because this was material that you didn't know about before. Now you do know about it and you're using someone else's material to support your argument, therefore you must document it. Uh, for example, I always tell my students about the argumentative paper. Um, suppose I were taking the side that people who turn to the age of 75 must be uh, given a driver's examination, written and the driver's examination, every two years. That's the side I'm going to argue. When I argue this, I can give some of my own reasons. Maybe I have some personal examples that I want to use. But I also need to do some research and find others to back me up others who have statistics, facts, examples to back up the argument that I'm giving my reader. So when I do that, I can use their material. That's what research is all about. I absolutely do want to use their material, but I must document. There is one way that we're going to use to document material that you use from others. These are referred to as in-text citations. In other words, within the text of your paper, within those body paragraphs of your paper, when you add someone else's material, when you add your sources that you've researched, you can write it in there, but you have to let the reader know that I am using someone else's material. And that's what an in-text citation is. It is citing your source within the text of your paper. There are only two ways that I should see an in-text citation written in the body of your paper. One way is if you use a direct quote or even if you paraphrase the information. At the end of the direct quote or at the end of the paraphrasing you should use the author's last name and the page number from which you took the material. And do you notice you place it in parentheses. For example, if this were the end of my sentence here and I paraphrase material from this source I would type my sentence, then in parentheses I would write the author's last name, only his last name, and then I would write the, or type the page number from where the information came. I would use, close it with the, with the parenthesis and notice where the period goes. It goes outside the parenthesis. It does not go after the sentence, even though the sentence ended here. We consider the in-text citation to be part of that sentence. Therefore, we put the end punctuation right after the parenthesis. This is the preferred way. 
If you are using a source and you have an author, that is the best way to do it. You use the author's last name. You put it in parentheses, period, outside the last parenthesis. But you're going to find as you do your research, especially research that you do on the internet, there are many articles and many good sources that maybe have been compiled uh, by a group of editors or a group of members for that particular magazine or journal. And sometimes they're not going to give an author's name. Many times if you're using a newspaper source, you might um, use an article written by the Associated Press and you are not, they're not going to give an author's name. If that is the case, then there is a second way that you can write an in-text citation. The second way to do this is if there is no author, you will use the title of the article. So we are going to assume I am writing my paper. Here is the end of my sentence or the end of my direct quote. The article that I am using to support my argument, this article does not have an author. Therefore, I can't use the author's last name. So instead, I'm going to use the title of the article that I referred to. I still put it in parentheses. I still put the period that ends the sentence on the outside of the last parenthesis. I do all of that, but instead of an author's last name, since I don't have one, I use the title of the article. Also, please note that because it's a title of an article, just as you do when you write a title of an article in a paper, because it's the title, I put quotation marks around it. This is all MLA format. So, uh, you know, we are using MLA format, and this is the way you would write in-text citations. Please, a word of caution, these are the only two ways I should see an in-text citation. I should not see any URLs. I should never see uh, www.cnn.com. I should never see that. No URLs. They'll be absolutely marked incorrect. Also, I should not see Associated Press or the title of a book or the title of the newspaper. None of that should ever be in my in-text citation. I will have room for all of that material on my last page of my paper, which will be my works cited page. But all of the material in the context of my paper, when I use that, that document, when I use that source, I either use, preferably, an author's last name and page number. If there's no author, I use the title of the article and the page number. One remark about page numbers. Sometimes on internet sources there are no page numbers. If that is the case, if no page numbers are you know, involved there, then you just would not have one. For example, suppose this, uh, this actually did, was an um, article from Time Magazine, but it was online and there was no page number given. So I would just put, give up the keys in parentheses, I mean, excuse me, in quotation marks, have my parenthesis and then my period. But those are the only two ways I should see in-text citations in these last two papers. Please do not put anything else there or it will be wrong. So it's very, very important that we have these in-text citations. As always, if you have questions about it, just give me a call.